So with regards to the hereafter, this is the situation as well. If there are amal, deeds, and if inside a person he has respect and value and appreciation for those amal, then properly he will practice those amal. If an individual, if you want to take benefit from an individual, if you have greatness, respect and regard of that person inside your heart, present, however much there is, the more than you will take benefit from that person. For this reason you will see that a sheikh has thousands of murids, hundreds of thousands of murids, but from within those you will see a difference in everyone. Somebody will be on a different level, a different status, on a different maqam. And this doesn't mean that the sheikh is distributing his love. Because this is bithnillah from Allah Ta'ala. The sheikh doesn't have anything in his control. Where does this come? From Allah Ta'ala. Allah is khabir, basir. He knows of the hearts, the condition of the hearts. And this is a very big subject because Allah is being attained. We have to arrive to Allah. So then why is there a difference between the students, the muridin? And within a few moments a person can go from here to here and somebody takes all his life and he's on a lower level. What's the reason for that? Because the difference is aqeedah, ihtaram, regard, respect, adab. In that murid, if he's got respect, regard, adab, and the more greatness and izzat he has in his heart, muhabbat, love, the more that student will pull on the phase, the blessings from the teacher. He will take benefit every discussion, every word, sitting with him, walking with him, seeing him, his life. He will... The life of the sheikh will become the benefit for the student. So this is very important. The salikin should pay attention to this. The students, when you go to the sheikh, then do you get nisbat? Is there a connection? Do you have respect for the sheikh in your heart? Do you have regard for him? If you don't, then you should have more. Because this is our subject of the sub of this wasila, means by which we are going to arrive to Allah. And if this path source is weak, just a routine, tradition, culture, cultural connection, we have a connection with that person, then your life will be a routine life and you won't benefit. You won't take any benefit. It's a very important point to understand. Allah says this is such an important month, such an important month, that it's not just for today, this day and age, for this ummah. Rather, this is such an important month that from Adam alayhi salam until now, all of the people came for, all of them are made it lazim. Subhanallah. So tell me what a great thing Ramadan will be. Allah's Nabi didn't say for nothing. It's so famous a hadith that a great month is about to come upon you. It's about to come upon you. Be attentive, be alert, be alert, be awake. Allah Ta'ala is saying this, respect and see it, it's important in your heart. This is not a small month that has been given to you. That all of the people from Adam alayhi salam until now, they attain it. No, oh, just Ramadan, come khair, oh, it's okay, we'll come and go, we'll keep the fast and that's it. We'll pray salah, we'll do talawah, dhikr, and Ramadan's coming. No, Allah says, no, this is not the way you pass this month. This is not the way you regard this month. Understand this month. What is this month? This is that ibad Allah Ta'ala has given in this month of Ramadan, due to which Allah Ta'ala wants to see it, its importance in our hearts so that we can implement this ibadah. Allah says, our maqsad, the objective of life, human being, what's our objective? That Allah Ta'ala becomes pleased with us and we become pleased with Allah. Yes, radiyatam mardiyya. Allah says in this verse in the Quran that the person when he's dying Allah is pleased with him and his servant is pleased with Allah and if we don't have this position that Allah is unhappy with us and we're upon this world then see the hal that will take place tell me what will occur all adab will come at that time when Allah is not happy with us and we're departing from this world fortunate that human being, the person with a man, is that person when he departs from this world, and Allah is happy with him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this month, via this ibadah, which is specific, unique, due to which Allah ta'ala says, that with regards to that ibadah, Allah says, understand it's a very great action that's been given to you, and that's what's hidden within this action, that through this ibadah, the objective is what? That via this ibadah, you can attain that conclusion, that Allah becomes happy with us. That feeling is attained, that condition is attained, that emotion is attained for human being, then that human being is successful. Listen carefully, you are salik, you are travelers, you are uh, students, and we're on this 
subject path, Allah Ta'ala, in the whole year is given us this month, so that we can revive our lesson, our sabbah, can remember him. What is that? What is that? Through which Allah Ta'ala becomes happy, and that's what a human being needs, without which he cannot be successful, and he can only get that through fasting. What is that factor? لَعَلَّكُمْ تتقون. That is taqwa. Taqwa, say subhanallah, subhanallah. Doesn't matter how much ibadah you do, take any ibadah, whatever worship you do. If we do not have taqwa, then everything will fail. Everything of that human being will fail. Success is based on what? Taqwa. Taqwa, remember this, taqwa. Allah Ta'ala becomes happy due to what? Due to taqwa. That we do zikr azkar. If through dhikr, adhkar, sobat of shaykh, connects with the shaykh, we do not attain taqwa, we cannot be successful. We will fail. Our dhikr will fail. Our sobat will fail. Our effort will fail. All ibadat, you can do everything. All the ibadat you do, worship, actions, deeds. If we don't attain taqwa, if taqwa is not felt, then we are totally failed. Why? Because it's not ibadah that Allah will ask about. Allah wants to look at the result of the ibadah. Allah has given us salah. Allah wants to ask about just salah. There are thousands of nawafil. Why didn't you pray? Hundreds of thousands. That's why Allah has given five salah in a day. So that, that factor we can, we can obtain via five salah in the day. Nur ala nur. The more sweet you put on top, the more sweet it will become. That's fine. If you want to pray, they pray a thousand of a hundred thousand of them. But, five salah in the day, Allah has instilled that factor. And you can get that result. If we don't get that result, that after every salah, what should we attain? Taqwa. Taqwa. After hajj, what should we attain? Taqwa. After giving zakah, what should we attain? Taqwa. If there's no taqwa in our lives, ibadah, our ibadah is not successful. So Allah Ta'ala has given us such an ibadah, which is called fasting, sayam, which practices to get to this factor. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The ibadah is taqwa. The name of this ibadah is taqwa. If there was no taqwa, then it wouldn't be a fast. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? This ibadah depends on this result that we become muttaqi, then you become a sign. Person who's fasting. If you're not muttaqi, then you're not a fasting person. How? How? Do you understand what I'm saying? Very easily I'm trying to break it down and explain. As a human being is sinning beyond sinning. Sinful person. Yes, how does he become a muttaqi? He's sinful beyond sinful. Thief, whatever he is, you can say to him, give him a name, title. He has got weaknesses within him. And he keeps the fast. Say, subhanallah. Subhanallah. He's kept the fast, yeah? So then on the other side, Allah says, لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The fast makes a person become a muttaqi. The muttaqi is a high grade, a sinful person. He's kept the fast. And he says, and the day he's a muttaqi. Subhanallah. So how, what an ibadah Allah Ta'ala is given to us, will he become a muttaqi? Why? Because he's doing that action within the fasting day. If he doesn't do the action, then he's not keeping the fast. He's not a fasting person. What is that? What is the action he'll do? That he's kept the fast. All life long he disobeyed Allah. Now he's kept the fast. And his nafs says, come on yaar, steal. Will he steal? Will he? He'll say, no, no, let's smoke cannabis. Will he smoke cannabis? The sign, you'll say, no, my fast will break. No one's telling him. No one's, nobody's telling him. Subhanallah, nobody's guiding him. He's free, he's, eat, he's uh, eaten food in the morning, and now he's got the stamp, he's a fasting person. Automatically, because man is present, even the worst and the worst of human beings, the jazma passion with him, no, Yara cannot do this action ever, I'm fasting. Oh, don't tell. So this is what we understand now, the fasting that Allah Ta'ala has given to us is for what reason? Lalukum tattaqoon, so you can become muttaqi. What is muttaqi? That a person makes his nafs habitual, the Bible Allah Ta'ala says, I will listen, or I will not listen to you, O nafs. Subhanallah. And 30 days Allah Ta'ala has given us the practice of Islam, nafs, that one human being, that make your nafs used to this. I'm not going to listen to you, I'm not going to obey you at all. Just like during the fast, I didn't listen to you. Let's say, okay, fair enough. Ramadan I take away from you, back from you, but I will continue the spring of Ramadan. The garden, the freshness, the, that feeling, that emotion. That same Ramadan you'll get. Acceptable? Accept it to you? You accept? Say yes. Say yes. The Ramadan's gone. Physically. Practically it's gone. But physically, 
Ramadan says, I'm still with you. Practically I'm gone, but I'm still physically with you. So in Ramadan you stopped sinning. Ramadan stopped you sinning. Ramadan corrected you. So Allah says, I'll give you such a thing that after Ramadan, even Alhamdulillah, you will still feel Ramadan. You will still feel Ramadan. In the world you will be back into the world, but every moment you will feel that emotion. Ramadan was just like Ramadan stopped you and stopped your nafs. Inshallah, in the same way, your nafs will continue to to be have the brakes on it and the stops on it. And that's such a thing I'll give to you. Allah this is a point to listen to, brothers. Ramadan's gone, but after Ramadan, remember the spring of Ramadan doesn't go. The emotion of Ramadan doesn't go. The feeling of Ramadan doesn't go. Allah says, you want to attain that same end conclusion. Eh? That you want to suppress your desires. You don't want to obey your nafs. You want to follow Allah's orders. You want that same feeling of Ramadan on going. Allah says, I'll give that to you. You'll get it. How do you get it? Allah says, in Quran, Ya ayu ladheena amna tuqullah. O people of Iman, attain taqwa. Kunu ma sadiqeen. Subhanallah. That all these things you'll get, same taqwa, go to the company of the Ahlullah. The friends of Allah, the people of Allah, I swear by Allah, total same Ramadan emotion. That just like in Ramadan, the human being fought his nafs, didn't listen to the nafs, same way when he goes to the Ahlullah, the friend of Allah makes somebody a sheikh, a teacher, his azmat, his greatness, his status comes to your heart, just like Ramadan came into your heart, just like Allah gave Ramadan, in the sobat Allah has given me of this individual, and he also is respectful for me, just like Ramadan is, so just like Ramadan, you obey the order of Ramadan, don't do this action, same way your sheikh's order, you will obey, I will not commit the sins, subhanallah. And the person who doesn't listen to his sheikh's order, then he's not the murid, he has no connection. The Ramadan, if he doesn't obey Ramadan, he's not the fasting person.